Well, on the bench today, I've got a real old icon from the past. Um, I've got a Ham International Concord 2. It's got a signal meter, calibrate and soir, noise limiter, noise limiter and noise blanker, high, mid and low channels on a flick switch, volume, it's got soir, cow on the back here, squelch on the front, we've got FM, AM, upper side band, lower side band, carrier wave and PA, now that's what you call a selector switch, we've got clarifier, pull on, tune, so that's your course, plus or minus 5 kcs, again pull for on, and RF gain, and if you pull the button out there, low power. On the back, uh, looks like it's had some sort of mod on here, it's got on off but no switch. Socket for frequency counter, which is quite cool, uh, antenna. I think this is a cell call plug, tape recorder output. <laughs> God, where would you get a tape recorder from these days? It'd be a cool accessory to have though, for modulating. I don't know if you could wire it up to something like an iPod or something, I don't know. And then a, a two pin power lead. Another light switching thing here for minus 40 and you've got PA and extension speaker. So it looks like it's had some mods done on it sometimes, two different flick switches. So let's have a look inside. Oh my god. Well, the PLL02A is actually on this little piece of breadboard for some reason. Um, board don't look in too bad. A oh my god. <laughs> Someone has disintegrated all the pads off of where the PLL goes by the look of it. We'll have a look when we take the other cover off. The speaker leads are disconnected. Right, we're in. Um, there's a wire hanging off here, green wire. It was going across to here, so it connects somewhere onto there. And that looks to be about it. Looks in pretty good condition in there. Um, yeah, so this wire goes across here somewhere. Okay, anyway. Let's have a quick look at this uh, PLL socket because that's a bit alarming. Let me take you out of here. So that's got the PLL 02A chip in a socket. Loads of wires on here. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. I've never seen that before. It's so obviously where they stripped all the tracks off, but whether they've connected the right ones to the right pins, I have no idea. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what to do. That's just stumped me a bit. Okay, let me have a look into this and uh, I'll come back to you. To be honest, I've come to the decision, I'm going to go around and take this board off and then we can actually see down there exactly what we're faced with. And uh, I'll have to make a decision from there as to what we do. So let me get whizzing round with the old red hot poker. Huh. I did notice this on the lid when I took it off. That's obviously holding that down. Actually, before I desolder this, shall we see if this thing actually transmits? I want to be a bit careful here. I can't find my power lead. So I've put some crocodile clips on there. Uh, that one. It does actually light up. Last on channel 39. So let's go down to channel 20 on the mids. Uh, what have I got I can key it with? Uh, so we want to go on FM. Let's put the aerial lead in the back. What's this wire hanging out there? It's probably a speaker wire. No. 
<laughs> oh god, it actually transmits. Um, it's not doing a lot of power, but it's uh, so that's on FM. Let me try and do it again. Oh, I can't get in there with the camera there. Hang on. So we're doing one and a half watts. Well, <clears throat> so that's a good sign, but I'm still not happy with that board laying on the back. I think what I'm gonna do is desolder it and try and tidy that up. Um, the PLL in theory, oh, it's even got a socket down there. So how the hell did they burn out all of them tracks if it's got a socket? That is just bizarre. Um, it does make you wonder. Okay. Um, this looks in fairly good condition. There's a capacitor there needs replacing. You can see it's gone back a bit. Uh, that's about the only one I think. Oh, I don't know, I'll have a look anyway. Right, let's get this thing desoldered. Come off. That was off. That's off. That's off. God almighty, what the hell have they done here? That's off. Right, we've got this last one. It doesn't seem to want to unsolder. I don't know what they've put this on with. Here we go. Got it. So up on the screen now is the aftermath, so we can actually see a bit better what's going on. So I'm just going to quickly get some IPA Give that area a good scrub over and then we'll have a look and see exactly what what we're left with to work with i've had to think about this and i've come up with a proposed plan if you look at the um, board here i've got soldered there so i've still got a pad there i've still got a pad there and there on this side and then i've got one there one there one there one there and then a few running down the edge here so I have got some anchor points to hold it in. So what I'm going to do is you remember I'm always saying about save the legs of your components. So my plan is I'm going to desolder the IC socket that the person's got in there anyway, because for me they've got the wrong type of socket in there. And I'm going to remove all that, clean all the board up with IPA. I'm going to resolder the pads that I've still got left, but on the ones where the tracks and things are missing, I'm going to wrap this piece of wire round the leg that pokes up through the board and solder that to the leg. Then I'm going to run a link wire down to where I've got a good bit of track. I'm going to bear back some of the resist and then make little pin wire tracks go into the other pins where it's missing. Now that's the plan. Whether or not it's going to work, I don't know. Um, 
how close these are going to be again I don't know I mean the ones I've got are quite thick whether I'll need thinner leads I don't know I'll try a couple and we'll see how we go so anyway I'm going to quickly get the soldering iron desolder what I've got left and get that uh, IC socket from the other side out and then we'll actually be able to see exactly what we're faced with but at the moment we're just faced with a complete mess someone has absolutely wrecked this board but if I can sort that out because the radio did seem to transmit I think there's not going to be too much wrong with it but it's just whether we can save it so I got the IC socket out from underneath and yeah I, I'm not familiar with that type to be honest with you that's what I'm going to be putting back in and then I'm going to put the chip in and get it nice securely and seated put that in and then I'm going to solder to the legs of the IC socket so although some heat will rise it won't be actually in really direct contact with the IC itself and then it's all in and snugly fitted but this has even got loads of legs missing as well when I took it out as well I did find one leg but the others were just not there so it was absolutely mullered um, I am really surprised by this. There's what it looks like now. Um, here's a close up of the board. And as you can see, we've still got some pads, but uh, not a many. Now I'm going to run down this row of pads here and this missing lot of pads here because that's the only width I've got. But if you get the IC socket and sit it in, the one I've got just plops straight in and it fits really nicely. But obviously I've got to put that on the other side of the board. Picture on the screen at the moment now shows the area once I've desoldered it all and IPA'd it and cleaned it up and you can now see the full extent of how many pads we've got missing. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six pads completely missing down one side of the board and one, two, two and a bit missing down the other side. And that's the what I've got to replace and join the tracks and things back together. Um, I think it's doable. Um, I'm confident I can do it, um, but it's not going to be that easy. The good news is, at the point where I've marked, you can see these big pads at the end. That'll be perfect for joining the wires on in those three positions. But in the other two, where I haven't got those big solder pads, I'm going to have to scrape back some of the green track and it's quite thin and bend it round so it doesn't hit that other pad at the end um, so that's not going to be that easy um, maybe I might run a link wire I don't know maybe that might be easier I'll do those when I get to them um, the other side looks like the majority of the tracks now there's one missing there yeah, there's a couple of breaks there as well so yeah we definitely got some stuff to join there whether they was fitting an EEPROM or because they've actually cut into the board here um, or they was doing some mod I don't know but yeah definitely got some sorting out to do on here what a mess well the good news is oh, the picture on the screen shows the silk screen side of the printed board I your side with all the text and numbers and things on and you can see the layout for the PLL chip and it actually shows you the orientation on the board. So that's very useful. So I can definitely make sure I get pin one in the right place. So here's the three IC sockets um, that we've got. So we've got this one with the round circular holes that had the um, PLL fitted to in it. The one I'm going to use that's got the actual slots so these legs slot down into this that's that's the one i'm using and then we got this other one which has just got holes but it doesn't look like it's got any contacts so i'm not too sure i'll take a close up and put it up on the screen bring for you now and you can see the difference but yeah, this one I've never seen before. Whether that had more stuff on it, and again, the guy or whoever's ripped it off, I don't know. That one to me is never the right type for this type of device um, because it's got round holes. 
and this one because it's got the slots and this has got flat legs that's the ones that I, I like to use I have to say this board looks like a blooming Medusa type contraption I mean, snakes all flying around their head um, what's on the back it's not been badly soldered on the back um, but yeah I mean some certainly some work gone into trying to get all their wires in there but what a bird's nest right so the green wire I've soldered onto this pad the blue one here was already on and the orange and then what I've done and this is the best I can do because this has been an absolute nightmare to try and put this right is I've been in here and I've soldered link wires across onto the tracks to try and tidy the um, PLL up but that's the best I can do you can even see here this one running right up here I've had to bend another one round there it's a right old jigsaw to get the thing done but I think we're there so I'm going to now go take you along with me and we're going to power this radio up and see if we can receive anything on it because I'm wondering whether it's just a case of this was knackered and that's why basically I ended up with it because someone had just mullered their radio. I mean, this is a Hamming International Concorde 2, for God's sake. Why would you do that to your radio? But hey-ho, people do. So anyway, let's see if we can save it. Right, I've had to put like a little screen up here because of the sunshine behind it. So uh, let's plug in, turn on. Let's have a look. Well, that sounds good because we've got FM, AM, which is quieter, upper side band, lower side band, I don't know why I carry a wave, screaming, PA. Right, let's have a flip around the bands, better go on to FM. The needle's sort of halfway up, so it seems to be receiving. Yeah. Oh, it's received. It's reading on FM. Nice audio. <laughs> Let's go on, that was on the mids, let's go on the highs. So it's now gone to channel 41. Oh, that's working, okay. Let's go up a side band. So that's someone on a side band, let's see if we can clarify them in. Why is it always when you're waiting for someone to speak it takes ages? Come on! I will come back. 44. No one on the triple five, unfortunately. Oh. Oh, 
Oh, I couldn't quite hear. 575. So that. quite pressed with this so far. We'll try the low band in a minute. We'll have a look down there. Just noticed that we're on the high channels. Just noticed we're on the high channels and there's no light on, so probably the LED or little bulb's gone. So let's go down to the lows. Oh. Is that right? That's a bit weird. So, I'm on the mids and I'm on channel 1. I go high, I go to channel 41, that's to be expected. Then I go low and I go to channel 41 as well. If you own a Concorde 2, can you let me know if that's right when you go low, if you should go 41 in the display? Because I've not had one of these before and I don't know, I mean that may be right, it may not. I can check it with my frequency counter, but someone can let me know and confirm that. It may be that that wire that I put on the channel selector is not right for the, um, the display. So if you have one, please comment and let me know. Right, I'm going to have a little flick round the bands, do a bit more listening um, from the fruits of my labour because um, it seems to be receiving quite well the next thing to do in the next video um, is we'll put it on the power meter we'll give it a tune up and we'll give it a full alignment we'll uh, get a microphone for it and uh, hopefully we'll get this thing on the air so I'm going to conclude the video there while I just do a bit more flicking around hope you enjoyed this and part two will be coming soon thanks a lot you're changing, you're dropping down into the noise with some of the other folks there, but it was a pleasure talking to you. I still didn't get your name, but uh, hopefully I can get it written down there. And uh, we can catch it on this time before conditions wiggle all the way out of there. Thanks, everybody. It's uh, it's always nice to talk to you folks over there. It makes, me, it makes me giggle and smile every time I get a hold of you guys in the U.K. and France and Italy and all over in that area. Enjoy uh, peace to uh, the people in Ukraine and I uh, hope everything works out over there for everybody and uh, it gets, gets a lot better than it is right now. Take care. 73. This is World Radio 1838 Dennis, Florida, USA.